Cuba, however, is still communist. To many, the country is an anachronism, left over from the Cold War and due for a massive change as soon as Castro is gone. The Cuban Missile Crisis was the closest the superpowers have ever come to nuclear war. Over the ensuing months and years, the key players have analyzed its causes and its course. I think looking back on Cuba, what is of concern is the fact that both governments were so far out of contact, really. I don't think that we expected that he would put the missiles in Cuba because it would have seemed such an imprudent action for him to take, as it was later proved. Now, he obviously uh, must, have thought, must have thought he could do it in secret and that the United States would accept it so that uh, he uh, did not uh, judge our intentions accurately. Well, now, if you look at the history of this century, where World War I really came through a series of uh, misjudgments of the intentions of others, certainly World War II, when you look at all those misjudgments which brought on war, and then you see the Soviet Union and the United States so far separated in their beliefs, and you put the nuclear equation into that uh, that uh, struggle, uh, that's what makes this, as I said before, such a dangerous time and that we must proceed with the firmness and also with the best information we can get and also uh, with, uh, with care. That same month, at his villa on the Black Sea, Khrushchev revealed his feelings about the Cuban Missile Crisis to the editor of Saturday Review magazine, Norman Cousins. Uh, Khrushchev was very somber as he spoke about it. He said that I get nightmares when I think how close we came. And suddenly he said I had this terrible responsibility. Was I going to try to, out of pride, just to determine, just to demonstrate to the world that the Soviet Union could stand up to the United States? Was that decision going to result in the destruction of my country and your country. He said it was insanity. 